Greetings, nerds. This is Dana Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well tonight, Sarah. How are you doing? And me. And me. And me. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I know. We were like, we should like, we should have done, if we had been planning better, we should have done a, a live podcast tonight as the Emmys were going on. That sounds like way too much work. <laughs> um, but I like where your head's at, and I appreciate it. Hey, newsflash also, this is not only like TV's night um, regarding award shows, but it's also Friends' 25th anniversary. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Meaning I was four years old when it debuted. And it did not have an end. No, no, no. Me and my best friend, like we've known each other since we were five. We were texting each other because I found out and I texted her. And she's just like, and you didn't even get me into that show until we were like 14. (laughs) (laughs) After it was over. Exactly. Like it it had a, it had a profound effect on my high school experience after (laughs) it was over. (laughs) It's funny how, how this show has had a second life with millennials. I remember first run stuff and I, you know, it was kind of, I, I was never a big friend's fan so you know it was it was it was something that was part of the cultural zeitgeist and all that kind of stuff but i was never big into it but it's just interesting that of the shows of from the from the 90s that continues you have you have friends and and of course seinfeld but uh for some reason it seems that friends resonates more than, than seinfeld does Yeah, I mean, it helps to have Jennifer Aniston on that show, considering she remains a pretty huge star. Not that the others are not well known, but still in comparison, I mean, it's Jennifer freaking Aniston. She's she's right now, she's in there. So I think that's also part of the reason. But those 90 TV shows, actually a lot of them, I think, still remain. Speaking of which... So, Safe by the Bell is yeah. getting a reboot? Yep. Well, actually, it's not, I don't think it's a reboot. From what I understand, I guess it's a continuation of the story. Which is Without very... Mark Paul Glosser. So Glossler. far. So okay. far. Yeah, so far. So, it's very interesting. So, I I know we, we have it on our rundown to talk about the, the new Peacock Network. And that was, I guess, the, the kicked off the week of, of news. And... So at first, my first reaction when I saw Saved by the Bell and Punky Brewster and, and of course, your favorite, Battlestar Galactica, mm-hmm. uh, I, I was like, really? Are we going there? But once I started digging into it a little bit more, it seems that the story for Saved by the Bell is that Zach is actually now governor of California. Mm-hmm. And he is uh, closing down some of the low-income schools and in a budget saving measure. And then of course, some of the students who were impacted by this are getting uh, transferred to well-to-do and, and schools. And of course, Bayside High is, is one of them. And Mario Lopez's character and uh, Emily Elizabeth Berkeley, who are definitely signed on to the, to the new series are a part of that school. So it, it um, so I guess it's a continuation of, of the story, not necessarily a reboot. And you have con- confirmed that Battle Battlestar Galactica will not be a reboot. Will it be a continuation? Or yeah, Sam, it, it came straight from the, the man's mouth himself. So Sam Ismail made it very clear that it is a continuation of the story in Ron Moore's Battlestar Galactica universe. Okay, Apollo and Starbuck have they been confirmed to be seen on this continuation? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I think it's still, the story is still... Wait, developing. you can't do that with Starbuck now that I think about it. Sorry, it's been a few years since I did that binge. And okay. considering where they left it off, you can't... Hmm, I don't know if I like this. This was good news, and now it's ruined. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can watch it without Starbuck. <laughs> well, I think, from what I gather, I think Sam was mentioned that in the vein of, of Caprica sort of being a, a spinoff series, this is a spinoff within the within the Battlestar Galactica universe that Ron Moore created. It's not going to be tied to the original show that Glenn Larson did in the late 70s, but 
uh, you know, he, uh, what was it? Uh, so say we all. Uh, that was how he ended his, uh, his his tweet. But he he definitely confirmed that it's not going to be a, a reboot. So I think a lot of folks, when we first saw the news Monday morning or Tuesday morning, it was like, what the hell? Why are we rebooting a show that's not even 20 years old? <laughs> I mean, really. It, it, but it's legendary. It's freaking yeah. legendary, it that is. show. there, And it's funny, you know, I have like so many mixed emotions going on in my mind right now. And we, we should, probably shouldn't spend too much longer on this topic. But honestly, there is two episodes, I think, in the third or fourth season where Starbuck is not around And oddly enough, the most fascinating, um, but it was because of the political parallels and what was going on. That's all I say. So maybe it can work. I don't know. Like, but with any of these things, it's just a matter of time. However, I do have one gripe here. What the the heck? Who who thought of this idea? The Peacock Network? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It, it speaks for it. the joke. The joke tells itself. <laughs> <laughs> I just, <laughs> I, I mean, really, yeah. do we? Yeah. Uh, it, mm, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, they definitely need to think about rebranding. You know, NBC Universal Plus. I mean, NBC U Plus, something other than Peacock. NBC, but, like yeah. NCS. I don't yeah. know. They have all of the crime CSI shows, right? Or yeah, is that uh, Law and Order? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So MBCS. Yeah. So yeah. NBC streaming. I I mean, that's really with all of these streaming platforms, that's the trend. It's it so you know instantly what where to find it or where to go if it's on Hulu, Netflix, or if it's um, Apple Plus TV or yeah. whatever. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, and and they are going to have some other original programming. There's a, a show that was a, a podcast, Doctor Death, which I think chronicled a, a true story, true crime story from a, a Dallas doctor who uh, were was performing uh, surgeries and people came out maimed and uh, were dead, and so it was. Uh, Jamie Doran is starring in that, and Alec Baldwin and actually Christian Slater are going to be in that series. There's uh, the original show based off of the book Brave New World. Uh, there's Jada, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith's uh, original show that's going to be on this network. So there's going to be other offerings beyond. <laughs> you some you of the have ones. to. Yeah. You have to. You can do all the reboots that you want. You can go through your catalog, but if you don't bring something new, you're not going to be part of the game. You're not exactly. going to be a player. I mean, that's a part of the, re- I, I always bring this up when we talk streaming services. The only reason to have Hulu is because of A Handmaid's Tale. Yeah. And that's its original show. So, so you have to build that. Amazon, I think really why it, it got, um, it like suddenly was in this, had this moment was because of Marvelous Mrs. Maisel and all of the acclaim and then everybody's just drawn to it and suddenly want to get in on it and and I mean Emmys help. Emmys help everything. Yes. But anyways before we jump into the latest and greatest of the Emmys let's do a brief brief two minutes on the CW Arrowverse Because we got some more casting announcements. It's like they listened to us, Will. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they listened to us. They they tried bringing my dream to reality because I had this all figured out. I wrote the fan fiction. No, I didn't. But I could have. Where Cameron Cuff would appear on Inf- um, Crisis on Infinite Earths. And, the, and it would help that show, which got canceled. So, you know... Just when I think there's like hope, which Superman is a symbol of hope, so that's quite ironic. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, just gets, it just gets killed off, apparently. <laughs> but in which, even though they couldn't make that work, they did secure, you know, to me, I, I know there were former originals, but, you know, there there's something really special about Tom Welling and, Welling and Erica Durant's Lois and Clark from Smallville, so they're going to appear. Yep, yep. This was uh, some stor- news that 
a lot of folks were just spitballing all during the summer, of course, during during San Diego Comic Con. Rumors were like, it's confirmed, it's this, it's that, the other. And and then Tom kind of on his Instagram teased it, but it was just at that point still, I guess, in negotiation. But this week it was confirmed and all of the Smallville Arrowverse just rejoiced because it's like the it was like Christmas in, in September for for a lot of fans because this was definitely something that when Crisis was announced, folks were art were, were were really really hopeful for. And at this point, we just need to hear that um, Michael Rosen is coming back as, as Lex Luthor. I mean, that's that's all that's missing at this point. Well, see, and and that's that perfectly illustrates my point. Everybody was rejoicing, but then the ne- within the same conversation, it's like, okay, where's Michael Rosenbaum? It's like, yeah. whoa, greedy, yeah. greedy. <laughs> we are okay. <laughs> like, are you are you kidding me? And also, you know, as excited as as I am for this whole crossover, and really for Arrow to just die. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit aggressive. But... That was a bit. That was a bit aggressive. I feel I'm like kind of over it, guys. <laughs> you're going through various stages of 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 grief, and I think you're anger right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of DC fans out there who are angry about just about everything in the world these days. Yes. All they have to do is release an image from Birds of Prey, and yeah. oh man, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> the anger comes out. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I'm fearful that this is just going to become a hey you you hey you hey you yeah. like this person that is and it's not gonna especially and and you know it's just fine especially because it'll be Stephen Amell's last crossover event as that character for all yeah. we know and it's and it's considering where they left off with season seven and season. Eight, the final season is going to be a build in. You're just like, really? I mean, yeah. yeah. And and we we all know that sh- that those events really shine when it's Oliver, Barry, and Kara. Like yeah. those are our three. That's our that's our um, that's our trinity for the TV verse. Yeah. Yeah. And and I just I wonder if it's gonna feel too overcrowded. I know what you're all thinking. Everybody thought that about Endgame and Infinity War, and it wasn't. It was perfect. Yeah. But this is DC. And but this is DC TV. Before. Yeah. But DC TV overall. Has let me down before. <laughs> well. Well. Okay. Now, now, the, now the movie. Now the movie verse definitely. The, the movie verse definitely has let us all down. But I will say. The the TV verse overall, little you know, uh, every everyone steps her toe. Batwoman is still a big great unknown until for a couple more weeks, but on balance, when these shows have all premiered, they have really done a solid job. And I think I know Mark Guggenheim is the driving force behind the crossover this year. But he's been in the past, and he is he has always delivered. So I am very hopeful that that's going to be the case with this. And yes, I mean the, the parallels with the end of the Infinity Saga with Marvel definitely is there. Mm-hmm. But I I I I feel that you're will... just excited because Black Lightning got a new costume. Well, that too. <laughs> <laughs> No, but all seriousness, I mean, there is. Well, everybody got a new costume this year. But, true, I mean, true. So, uh, but I, I think the crossover event is is it's not going. We're not going to be let down. Okay. I, all right. I, I'm marking it today, September twenty second, twenty nineteen. We will not be let down by the crossover. And if I'm wrong, guys can light my Twitter up. Well, and, and also. It's a crossover, multi-episode. So one may be stellar, but the arrest could suck. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, all right, let's get back to the main topic at hand, which is the 2019 Emmy Awards. Very mixed bag here going on. Um, however, I will, I do want to say, Will, mm-hmm. this is a reminder that 
we are so spoiled because I'm looking at a lot of these categories on my screen right now. Yeah. A lot of the winners. I have my gripes. I have my, well, it should have really gone here for personal reasons, mm -hmm. but whatever. I just like being right. I'm, I'm sure we all do when yeah. we call things. Right, right. But there's a lot of damn good TV. It like, really is. Even when I'm mad that somebody else didn't get it, I'm thinking, I'm like, but I understand because I saw that and I watched that performance or I watched that episode. The only thing I really haven't, well, two things I haven't seen, Chernobyl and Fleabag. And, of course, they're just walking around with Emmys left and right. They are. They're just jerks. Did Sharp, you watch? Sharp yeah. Objects got robbed. They should have. Poor Amy Adams. It's like, she's like the bridesmaid who's never the bride. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, she's, I, I want to know how many times she's been nominated for an Oscar, how many times she's been nominated for an Emmy, and just does not get it. Does not get it. Does not it, get it. It's like, it's like, a, who is uh, Glenn Close. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. So, of course, Olivia Coleman's going to steal the next one from her. Yeah, because that's what she did to Glenn Close. <laughs> yep, exactly, exactly. And she's going to be on the crown, and it's going to be like, and a winner for best actress in a drama yeah. series. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I am. Um, they did redeem themselves the moment they gave Michelle Williams that award. I was so worried because it felt like Foss Verdon was getting nothing, no love, no support. And I watched that miniseries. She just it's it's exactly what everybody says it is very it's a performance of a lifetime like really? jesus grace mm -hmm. this is not the same actress who i watched on dawson's creek really it's insane yeah it's on par with some of the performances you've seen in the um the movie chicago like Catherine zeta jones renee zellweger broadway star good wow. Like, wow. it's just it's just crazy insane how sh good she is um, Peter Dinklage won for Best Supporting Actor in a Drama Series. Yep. So you know, Game of Thrones has got to go out with a with with a trophy. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if they'll yeah. win the overall for the overall for the best for tonight, but at least you know, at least member people who were nominated will get something. Obviously, Peter did. Peter Dinklage did. Well, I mean, you. You say that, but then if you look at outstanding supporting actors in a drama series, they not have one, two, but three actresses from Game of Thrones nominated. You know yeah. who won? The girl from Ozark. Yeah, yeah. Which is funny. <laughs> you know how I I love Ozark season one. I have I have yet to watch season two. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Game of Thrones had four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so I really think it's it's there there's and and Will you may not understand this because you didn't watch Game of Thrones. Yeah. But there's Game of Thrones and our love of that show. And then there's Tyrion and our love of P Peter Dinklage in that performance. Mm -hmm. So I I um without seeing the category in front of me right now, I have a feeling Game of Thrones might win, but I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't. But I would have been surprised if Peter Dinklage hadn't get, been given like the oh, because it's your last year, you're ever going to get this, here you go. Right, right. Even though his performance was not as good as season four. Mm. Season four, he like plateaued. It was it was as good as it was ever going to get. But anyway, besides point. Um, one of the big, in my opinion, and, it, and it's hard for me to even say this is an upset, but it's just because I could have sworn Mahershala Ali had this in the bag. And he's winning everything else, Will. So he it is. wasn't a bad bet for me to make. No. And no. yet, Jarrell Jerome comes in and just sneaks it and takes it away from him. And I'm happy for him because this is a young kid who was given an opportunity and he crushed it. And... The show didn't get very much love other than this win, so it got something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I but when you look at the other actors in the category, I mean, there's Michelle Ali, the Benicio del Toro, Hugh Grant, Jared Harris, Knoble, and Sam Rockwell. I mean, it was a, it's a strong ass ca category actor in a limited series or movie. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm just like, just that category in general, I didn't realize how many limited series I have watched within the last year and loved within the last year, but it's starting to become a bigger thing than it was probably five years ago. It is. It is. I mean, when you look at the cat, look at these shows uh, that are, were in that category and based off of real life events, I mean, you know, and, and we're seeing more of them, but I mean, there's, there's, there's more and more of these shows that are coming out and, there's going to be even, I think that's what the, especially with streaming services and HBO, I mean, that's the trend that people are going to, as far as these types of limited series dramas. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel surprisingly got some love. They yeah, did. They, they did. which, and it makes sense. I will say having watched season two, Tony Shalhoub and Alex Bornstein steal that show. They are so good. And my dad always told me because he watched season one and he just loved Tony Shalhoub. And I'm like, well, that's because you were obsessed with Monk. (laughs) And I didn't get his character. Then season two comes around and man, he is just on fire because he realizes what his daughter has been doing. He realized some other family secrets and then him being this the head of the household kind of goes through his own crisis and it's really fascinating. And Alex Bornstein, Susie in the cat skills. That is why she won hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish she had brought a plunger up to accept the award and people yeah. who have watched the show know my reference, know my reference. <laughs> uh, speaking of Maisel, so Luke Kirby who plays Lenny Bruce, has won guest actor in a comedy series. Thank God. Yeah. Oh my. I have such a crush on that man. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's like parallel to Sterling K Brown. Like mm-hmm. it's on that level for me. Oh, wow. Um, he is so good as freaking Lenny Bruce. He is. He is. I love yeah, that I, character. Yeah. That I, mean, I character just feel like I need to go dynamic. back and just, yeah. I just feel like I need to go back and like, listen to some of those old tapes of like Lenny Bruce and just, just to, the way that that he has brought life to this character. And I I like how he's used in such a strategic way because this isn't the Lenny Bruce show. This is M- Mrs. Maisel. So but going into it, who has who has more name recognition? Well, Lenny, Lenny Bruce. So they sprinkle him in, and and he's really this connection that she has into this other world yeah. and this relationship. While her, 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 I don't know if I can say ex husband yet because I don't think they're officially divorced. But her and her her former husband. They, he's more a connection to her past and who she thought she would be. So, so I really like that dichotomy and uh, uh, hands off. I mean, sorry, Rachel, it wasn't your year, but these support the sporting cast really, I think, upped their game considering where she was at in season one. Yeah, yeah, I've still got to watch all of season two, but uh, but I, I definitely uh, this is definitely one of the my favorite shows that I've discovered over the last year. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, if you like that, then you need to go check out Barry. Um, and I am, I'm so, I'm so happy that Bill Hader won for Barry. A part of me has a suspicion. He might've also won because he was just in it chapter two. And mm. anytime somebody sees that movie, they just say Bill Hader. <laughs> <laughs> Well, granted, now these were voted; these awards are voted on before it chapter two. So, but That's yeah, awesome. but you know, but it's <laughs> it's still. But point taken, it's definitely uh, you know when you're hot, you're hot. Yeah, and we're talking about Hollywood. They get yeah. screeners way in advance. They do. They do. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. He knows. And then, and he very much like Mrs. Maisel gets shut out for comedy directing and writing because Fleabag, Fleabag, which. Hats off to you. I don't know why I haven't watched it yet. It is now on my list as something I should probably check out. So I feel more included. I'm not going to watch Chernobyl. I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. You know, I've told you 
Yeah, you've told, I've told you my reasons for not watching Chernobyl. It just sits too close to home for my, my professional job. So I'm just like, no, nah, I'll just, I, I know enough about it. I don't need to watch it. And will you look at that? And I'm sorry, guys, we did not expect so many like announcements of who's winning to occur right now. But I just, I just saw it. Well, um, outstanding writing for a drama series, Succession. Mm. And I, yeah. But we were just talking about that right before the show. And why were we just talking about that, Will? Because I have started Succession. Because we've converted him, people. I yes. finally did it. I yes. haven't done it yet with Billions, but Succession is like the preamble for Billions. <laughs> 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 and so so you've only watched like the first two episodes? Yeah, yeah, I just started. So but I, I really love it. I don't I, I I see why the show has gotten such buzz and, and folks love it so much. So I, uh, I I'm definitely going to uh to, to bl- zip through this this first season and guess I can get caught up with uh with everyone. Season two. I season two, I was thinking about it over the weekend and I haven't talked about it yet. This surpasses season one for me. Mm-hmm. I, I, everything that they, they had to do season one for the setup, for really putting all of the players on the board. Season two, though, it just gets more conniving and you really see this family for what it is. And all of the dynamics become fleshed out. Um, shout out to Jerry. Jerry. And um, Kieran Culkin's character, that dynamic is so bizarre in season two. It should not, it, it should not be something I like, and I'm kind of shameful for saying I like it, but it is fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> Disturbing, but fascinating. <laughs> and then, of course, I love Shiv. Shiv and Tom. Like, Shiv and Tom. <laughs> bizarre. I don't know. It's it's, right, a, right. it's a it's a crazy show. It, it, it well, like I said, I I have uh, what I have watched so far. I see it is it, it definitely has earned the the reputation that it has. It's definitely a very thoughtful, very 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 just it just catches you right from the moment you start watching it, and you just want to find out more about this family and the dynamics and. The network and all the everything about it. I mean, Brian Cox and his character. You know, as far as the, the grand, as far as the or patriarch of the family. It, it, yeah, I just, I just really, really love it, and I, I'm definitely going to be finishing it up. Yeah, easy binge, easy yeah. binge. So let's put a hold on further Emmy announcements um, while we go and talk about some Titans. Yeah. Oh, Titans episode three. What are your thoughts, Will? I I like where they're going with the series. I think they um, the episode title was Ghost, and we it was not too subtle at all with the all <laughs> <laughs> about the ghost that they uh, when this, the show starts out when the uh, Donna and Hank and Dawn returned to Titan's Tower, and minute, immediately you have a flashback to a, a birthday party that was uh, at the tower some time ago, probably when when the, the crew was the original Titans were uh, present. And um, yeah, so it, it, it I, I liked that where they were going with it. I thought that yeah, they they jump right into it as far as uh, Slade. Being the badass that he that he is, and something definitely happened there that caused the original Titans to not only be very fearful of him, but possibly led to their breaking up to begin with. And so, wow. and so, yeah. I mean, it's it, um, it, it was it was a good third episode. Okay, I have a I have a better episode title for you. Okay. Because I don't, I don't think Ghost does this does this episode justice. Um, I'm gonna just throw it out there. I would have named this episode Tease. Mm. That was that's what it was. It was freaking Tease for every single plot point in the world that they're gonna follow. Like they planted all of their seeds in this yeah. episode. It is. Some 
pretty much they not only planted it, but they watered it. And that that storyline grew to a point where I shouldn't know that it grew that that much. I don't know where I'm going with this metaphor, but I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, explore, which storyline do you think they pla- that they the grew? The Slade one. Like, sl- ever, Jericho. Yeah. It's so obvious that because Rose talks about how she's she and her brother or she and her father got into a fight over Jericho's death because she blames Slade. Well, all of the, there were so many unsubtle hints that really it was the Titans fault for Jericho's death. We don't know how. I kind of also have a suspicion that because Dick likes strays. Something happened where Dick recruited Jericho, not knowing his ties to just Deathstroke, and and there was some sort of betrayal, yeah. confrontation, and that ended with Jericho's death. Now, it is interesting, though, why Slade retires, essentially, mm-hmm. only for Jason to spoil the news and say the Titans are back in town, and then he comes out of retirement. So what made... What happened where Slade was like, I don't need to kill these people, but they're no longer going to be my problem. Because if he's really that big of a badass, why didn't he just stick around to kill them each one by one? That is something that has to be explored. And I I don't know why he didn't kill them off in the first time. Or maybe he tried to and was unsuccessful, Mm -hmm. obviously. But it it did lead to the breakup of the Titans and it removed... Basically, they, I mean, yeah, Dick basically retired from the superhero business. We think yeah, about right. it because when we, you know, well, we'll think about it. When we first saw Dick in season one, he had left Batman. He had left the Titans behind. He was now just a regular old B-cop detective in Detroit. Um, I'm sorry. I did watch season one. Wasn't he also dressing up in his Robin outfit at night and beating up bad guys? He was. He was. Oh, Fair point. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, he but, really he really went off into retirement. He really retired. <laughs> well, he well he went to Detroit. I don't know. Fair point. Fair point. I I but I think he maybe he retired from the, the, the team business. I mean, he could have easily he, he he didn't want he he was okay, okay flying solo. He wasn't going to be responsible for other individuals. Right, right, and I think that's really his. Achilles heel is that Dick also he knows that he to do this and to the, do this well and not have have guilt about actions of others he really has to go solo like Batman but he's also the type to basically adopt any single kid who may have abilities mm-hmm. and and move them and feel like a caretaker because that's what Bruce was for him so a lot of mixed messaging. It's, it's not really the point, um, but but I I agree. Like we're gonna we're gonna that story has to be fleshed out. I just I didn't like how obvious it was to me that really the Titans killed Jericho and it wasn't Slade's fault. That see, I, that beat kind of irritated me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think this also picks up from a story in the comics too, where I don't know if they're gonna I don't know if it's going to be a backstory. Or it's going to be a story for this year where uh, Slade, either either Jericho was a a pawn who that Slade used to get to know the Titans and find their weaknesses and exploited them, or he's using Rose to do that this season, and right. she's You're going to be the treasure the horse. Yeah. Yeah, Judas contract. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm kind yeah. of on the same page as you. A part of me thinks it might be the backstory to Jericho. I would be even more intrigued though if it turns out to be Rose. Yeah, I'm hoping it's the latter that mm-hmm. this, that it'll be Ravenger that's going to be the the Trojan horse that basically gets uh, into the Titans and basically follows the Judas contract storyline in this season. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, while all of this old Titans business is going on, we Corey is given her own little arc where we meet 
Okay, I don't know Corey's history. I don't understand the comic book references um, and really who this guy is. We w- What we do learn is that they have had previous interruptions because apparently that's what the kids call it these days. I guess so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He now, now, a part, like for the first 20 minutes, I was very intrigued by the storyline. I was like, oh, you get it, girl. You're a queen. This is cool. And then the more it went on, the more it felt like it went a Disney Disney princess route. <laughs> and I thought about all of the Disney um, made for TV movies I watched growing up, and I'm like, I've seen this before. I've seen this multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> was it was it the evil the evil sister that did it for you? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about that, but thank you. <laughs> all I had to say was evil stepmother, and I probably would have thought about it yeah, in an instant. Yeah. Well, it's just Black Star, yeah, Black Fire, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, that's the uh, it, she and Corey obviously don't get along. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> which is crazy because if you don't get along with your sister. I mean, why why wouldn't you want her on Earth? Yeah. What, what's the point of sending legions and a whole army out to hunt your sister who you don't want around? I mean, Loki was not. Hey, how about how about Thor? You stay on Asgard and we'll rule together. No, he was like, you get out of here because mm-hmm. I want to rule. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was more when they talked about why she doesn't want to return home. Because she likes being normal. She likes n- people not n- seeing her as a queen. And I'm just like, I'm tired of that. Because on one hand, yeah, that makes her more human. On the other hand, I'm just like, every girl's prin- dream is to be a princess. And you are. Embrace it. Because <laughs> us peasants <laughs> would like to know what that feels like. <laughs> Yeah, I, I did a little bit of digging in Corey's backstory because, I mean, I'm familiar with the Starfire character and obviously her uh, relationship with the Titans. And 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 so I guess, she, as I mentioned before, she and Blackfire do have, obviously, an acrimonious relationship. But there's also a subtext. There's also a very strong caste system on her planet. Mm-hmm. So And so it, it leads into some... Uh, stories of interest servitude and slavery as part of that caste system so maybe those are some of the things that she's trying to get away from because on earth she can be normal and not have to to deal with the inequalities and yes i'm a queen and everything on this world but uh, but at the same time after being exposed to earth and and it being a more open society maybe she she is like i i want to get away from all that Right, right. Uh, no, I I think she does. I think she likes... There, there's all, also... And Rachel finally did something right this episode. I mean, she screwed up, of course, for a good 20 minutes. And then she, she did what the viewers wanted her to do, which was call Corey and mm-hmm. say, I need you. Mm-hmm. Because there is a connection there. And I actually appreciate that connection more than Rachel's connection with Dick. Yeah. Um, because there's just some weirdness also where even even when Rachel and Rose were bonding over um, Bad Dad's Club, I was also thinking to myself, also, you two seem to have this attraction happening with Dick, who's supposed to be older and like a father figure, creepy and weird. Yeah. Anyways, you yeah. guys know me by now, the weird <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just throwing it out there. So... I, I, and that's really, it's, she, if, if, if he had come last year, she would have been on that ship and left. Mm -hmm. Um, but now that it's not only she found her place, but she's found her family or family that she wants. Yeah. Yeah. Not only her, I like that relationship between Corey and and Rachel, but the one that I really, really enjoy is the Mm -hmm. relationship between Donna and Corey. Yeah. Can we get, can we just put an ax on this whole Titans business and just rename the show and really focus on Corey and Donna partners in crime? Yeah, totally. Like, can, can I get that? Huh? huh? Let's get that. Let's get that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, so Slade, now you, you said at the beginning, you thought he, 
like there's shows really capitalizing on how much of a badass he is. I don't know, Will. I, I there there's there's hint of history, there's hint of intrigue, and they haven't really used used him in a way where I'm just like, damn. But because right in this episode they focus on him and Doctor Light, and Doctor yeah. Light is really that this um, this creature that he's using in order to to um, spy on the Titans per se. Yeah, yeah, he's just using them to lead it. Yeah, to definitely draw the Titans out. Yeah, I think really Slade just needs to realize this is a one man's job. We don't need no Doctor Light, who frankly. Gave me the most Aquaman vibes I have had since I watched the movie in that ridiculous costume. Which, <laughs> go figure, next episode we're getting Aqualad. So yeah. maybe he stole it from him. I don't know. Yeah, Garth will, yeah, Garth, Garth will be around uh, in the next episode. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Dr. Light, it when they first encountered him in the stadium and... Of course, the Titans go out without any of their gear, which I was just sort of like, really? You guys are going to go take this, take on Dr. Light without suiting up? All right. A little bit of hubris there. And and rightfully so, they go out there and, you know, make a real mess of it. Um, and so I, I, I think... He definitely served his purpose as far as just pulling the Titans out, exposing that that conflict, especially between Dick and, and and Donna, as far as you know, what are you, what is your motivation here? I mean, why are you, is this? Are you really trying to train train Titans 2.0, or is this? Are you just playing a camp counselor? Mm-hmm. And 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 then of course Dick has to address, you know, really address that conflict especially when when jason was like hey i want to go out and field and and i want to i want to i want a piece of the action and stuff and then of course he like you know as as hard as dick is trying to not be bruce he does he pulls a very bruce move and like takes jason down so it's like i would have done the same thing yeah well jason jason's a punk i mean they yeah i mean he's, he's a total punk and he needed to be brought down a notch or two but but i think I think it, this episode really is it's showing that evolution in Dick that he's he's realizing that okay, I, I I'm trying to separate myself from the things that Bruce did in training me and, and bringing me up as as Robin, but he but in, in establishing his own ad, identity as the leader of of the New Titans. He's going to have to. He's going to. He's going to have to do some things that Bruce did, but also put his own spin on it in order to make sure that this team is cohesive and, and not going out there and getting you know, be reckless like they were, to the point where Hank gets you know gets hit and wounded by Doctor Light, which he shouldn't have. Well, I mean, Donna took care of that and swatted him like a fly, may yeah. I say. That was pretty awesome. That but was. but speaking of recklessness, guys, um, costumes, I, I I get it. You don't want it, but um, secret identity, anyone? Uh, yeah, not yeah. letting people know who you are. Yeah. There's There was all of the, this talk about where you followed. Do they know where you are? Do they know where Titans and all? Well, uh, I, I covered my tracks, and then I'm going to go out. And try to take down Doctor Doctor Light in a jacket and some jeans. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah. really you, you and they all did it. All of those Titans did it. So, yeah, at least at least at least Donna had her her lasso of persuasion. <laughs> like, like Jesus Christ, what's wrong with you? Like this is a rookie mistake. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Will. yeah. If um, I were yeah, if I were Jason, I'm like, what the hell? You're trying to train me. You're doing this. Yeah. So yeah. So Jason did have a point. Oh, Jason, all all I'll say about the final few sequences of the show is you could have made this into a drinking game with the number of times Gar and Jason said dick. Yeah. (laughs) 
in a row even like by yeah. by the end of the first scene not even when they're in the underground tunnels would you already probably be like just shit faced <laughs> yeah you would be yeah totally <laughs> and i was just like we get it that's his name <laughs> yeah yeah can we just call him nightwing already <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Granted, camp counselor, I, I did think about it, and I think the costume could be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just, yeah, they just, I guess they may, they may need, but given the uh, leaked photo from the set, they, they definitely need to put some implants in the backside to uh, match, the, match the actual uh, Nightwing. But anywho. <laughs> well, you, you called it, Will. You... You said it, and it was like they were listening to you. Game of Thrones won Best Outsta- or Outstanding Drama Series. Mm. Beating out Succession, This Is Us, Pose, Ozark, Bodyguard, and Killing Eve, and Better Call Saul. Yeah, see, uh, yeah. I have no, I have no allegiance to the show, but I, I just, it's just one of those like, okay, it's the last year. You got to give them a damn Emmy. You don't have to do anything. I mean, well, yeah. you could have, have given to. it to Succession. You could have, but come on. This is the last chance that, can, that Game of Thrones can just go out and just, you know, give a middle finger to all the fans who was like, see, see, we were, we knew what we were doing, but anyway. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, the, an obvious one, outstanding com- ser- comedy series went to Fleabag. <laughs> okay. So. I, I would have been shocked at this point if it didn't win that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the night was going in that direction. <laughs> uh, what else? Now, this one I really, I really like. I have not watched the show, but um, I, I think it was a good call, especially in comparison to the alternatives. Billy Porter wins Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series for Pose. Hmm. I like that. Uh, this one caught me off guard again, though, in comparison to the alternatives, I, I can't fault it. Jodie Comer wins for Killing Eve for best lead actress in a drama series. Okay. Uh, we talked about all of those. Yeah. I saw where, um, Jane Lynch won for actress, guest actress in Maisel. Oh, yeah. Good. She, she... And J- oh yeah, and one last thing, uh, Jason Bateman won for directing and for a drama series for Ozark. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, I I think it, I was I just just had a thought uh, maybe on Friday night where I was like, huh, maybe I should tr- try to return to Ozark. Just skip over what I missed in season one and jump right into season two. Did that happen? No, no, it <laughs> but it could. That, that's another thing I'm kind of learning the more this really becomes such a TV dominated industry is that, yeah, it, it seasons, the initial seasons do matter, but, but it's, it's really, you are able to jump in at any point. Yeah. Um, all of these streaming services have recaps. <laughs> they do. They do. I interrupted you. you were, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I interrupted you. you. You had some thoughts on uh, Jane Lynch for uh, Maisel. Oh, I I didn't really. Except I wouldn't. I'm I'm not overjoyed with it. She plays a she plays the same character in everything. True. So and she plays a villain very similar to her character on Glee. So eh, is it nice? Yeah, but I I am. Far more happy for the actor who plays Lenny Bruce than I am for her. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. That is insane. We were able to do all of that. This is this is one one for the books, ladies and gentlemen. This yeah. is a first for us. Some real time yeah. reactions to these yeah. things. Uh, one, one last one before, because I know you mentioned Hans, Handmaid's Tale. So uh, guest actor in a drama series, Bradford Whit- Whitford. Who is that? <laughs> well, you watch anime still. I didn't, so you have to... I, I don't know who's, who this character was, but he won guest actor in a drama series. Was he I just remember... A... Yeah, I just remember him from, um, from West the, the West Wing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I know who it is. I know who it is. Um, interesting. <laughs> 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 I, I really want the actor who plays Luke... To win something because his performance this past year was heartbreaking 
he he would his character gets placed in these these instances of the, like there's a scene and uh, spoiler alert there's a scene at the end where they manage to get 50 50 plus kids out of Gilead mm. and he's there at the airport in Canada and his daughter and his wife are still over there so you see he, he one of the girls gets off and out of nowhere randomly gets reunited with her own dad and in that moment this actor does an amazing job and you see it in his eyes and then he looks back at their airplane and for the next like 49 kids all it is is like this hope that flees because she's not on the airplane but i mean good things are happening around him but there's also this like but where's my kid Oh, so heartbreaking. I I almost burst in tears, especially because then they bring in another character who tells them that they're here and they made it alive because of his wife. Wow. Yeah, it was wow. it was so heart-wrenching and he carries that scene. So I'm happy Handmaids gets some love, but I also, that actor, this is another reason why I'm so excited for Black Widows, because he's going to be in that movie. Mm. But, yeah, I I can still picture, like, his face and just recognizing that, or the hope and the loss of hope at all at once. All at once. See, I'm getting choked up just thinking about it. I it's know, so I know. Heart right, Shane. <laughs> I know, I know, I see that, but yeah, hey, we this is this is this is awesome. Though we were able to give our our listeners here some real time reactions to to the Emmy Awards tonight. That's uh, we couldn't have timed it any better, right, my friend? Yeah, yeah, and and we will never time it any better again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's it for us tonight. Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me at Will M Polk. That's W I L L. M P O L K on Twitter. And you can find me at SJ Belmont, S J B E L M O N T. Please follow our crew at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, but most importantly, rate, subscribe, and comment on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Spotify. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs>